Okay, so maybe I will start now. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to the um, uh, SE Lunch and Learn seminar. Uh, today we have uh, an expert in data visualization, Mr. Kun Ting Chen. Uh, he's a PhD student supervised by uh, Tim Wire and uh, Kim Marriott and Benjamin Bach. Uh, he is uh, uh, at the Department of the Human Center Computing, Monash University. And then uh, today he will give a talk about uh, on the title is a wrap, wrapping data visualizations around uh, cylindrical, spherical, and toroidal topologies. I hope I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> okay, over to you now. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Cloud. Uh, thanks for giving me uh, a chance to present my PhD project in your group. Um, my name is Kundin. I'm a second year PhD student from Department of Human Standard Computing. Um, so thanks for your kind introduction. Um, before joining Monash, I was a consultant and software engineer um, developing automatic field collection projects in, um, in use in public transport sector in um, land transport authority in Singapore. Um, I would also like to thank uh, Rashina who encouraged me to give a talk in your group, um, which is great. great. Um, in the first part of the talk, I'll be sharing um, my current research projects and um, with the topic in the slide. And then the, we have two Kai papers recently accepted for this topic. Um, the second part will be sh uh, sharing ex past experience working with HR software teams and some human-centric um, software development issues um, and approaches we have. Um, I hope my input will be helpful and be of interest to some of you. And I also kindly seek your advice on um, interesting data set um, uh, use cases of reps data visualization for software application. Um, so what is wrapping data visualization on a continuous surface? There are some very notable examples of 2D video games that are played on a continuous surface. Uh, for example, this classic arcade game, uh, Pac-Man. Note that uh, there's no boundary between the left and right side of the display. And um, the surface wraps around horizontally and infinitely as the Pac-Man angles travels from left to right and vice versa. Yes, it is the cylinder topology. Similarly, an uh, asteroid game was played on a donut topology. Perhaps there are not many people being exactly aware of the donut nature of the topology, but actually they understand the asteroid drifting to the top boundary, um, continue their trajectory at a vertical bottom position at point B. My research is to explore where the least intuitive understanding of uh, wrapping data visualization also extends to general data visualization networks in particular. In fact, um, the most common example of wrapping visualization on a continuous sphere is map projection. Many map projection exist. This example is a famous Mercator projection. Um, it shows that uh, as you pan off the diagram to the right, Australia will uh, continue at the left when they disappear at the right boundary. And the user can use um, a mouse to drag or touch in the action to focus on different sections of the map. Despite widespread use of map projection and um, theoretical study of graph embeddings on um, a, pl a planar chorus diagram, there has been very little research into repable data visualization. We aim to explore the following six challenges uh, in this research project. What are the types of data repeatable visualizations make more sense? And what is the design space for interactive life visualization? Um, apart from map projection, one of the data types we found most useful and interesting to be repeatable, to be repeatable is networks. Networks is a type of relational data. It is used to represent uh, friendships between people and community structures. Um, of human context, such as face-to-face -face meetings, conferences during COVID-19. And software architecture 
diagram that captures software relationships between components, classes, and functions. How to find a high quality layout of a node representations of the network and how to improve its usability is an open question. Once one solution to find a better um, solution of layout quality is to embed a network on a torus surface. First, this example is a simple graph K5 with a crossing. When we laid out this graph on a 3D torus, we can route a link 3 and 5 between from left to right through the outer ring, and we can route the link between 2 and 4 through the inner ring. This avoids the line crossings. Then we can um, flatten this, we can cut it open and flatten it onto a 2D screen, and we obtain a 2D diagram without crossing. A torus layout is continuous. It no longer has boundary as it does for traditional 2D diagram. The design space is observable. So the design space for torus layout is observable from this example. Um, as the data point um, goes to the button, they, re they reappear on the top. Similarly, when they go off the right boundary, they, re they continue at the left. For more complicated networks, such as examples at the right, how can we create a torus layout? And for even larger and denser network, um, it often forms a cable-like structure, such as this diagram. It is hard to observe any high-level natural structures from this layout. To the best of knowledge, there is no available software that creates torus layout for arbitrary networks. However, we see that the torus layout has the potential to um, take advantage of 3D torus topology to have better distribution of the nodes across the torus surface and better review the high level structures such as clusters. Here we use, uh, our, we firstly use a commonly used variant of force directed approach defined as minimization of stress um, across all pairs of nodes, which minimizes the overall differences between the graph theoretical distance between A and B and then the actual Euclidean distance A and B. We, this, minim, this process minimizes the stress across all the possible nine, all the possible torus wrappings, such as left, right, but top button and corner wrappings. Um, the software is open source and it is implemented based on CollaJS by Dwyer and others. And details can be found in our Kai paper. This example shows a, a simple network data on a torus using a tool. Um, so I, I would like to share this link in the chat. So feel free to open the link and then you can try yourself in on this notebook. So it shows how we can obtain a torus diagram from a standard unwrapped visualization. And there are some uh, options for you to choose in a tool as well. So uh, Taurus layer has a potential to untangle a network, um, but it also has a disadvantage. For example, a user now has to mentally wrap the link um, across the boundary. So given this example, I am able to see the shortest path between starts and end. Do anyone want to give it a go? <laughs> The left is a standard unwrapped representation, and the right is a its corresponding torus representation. Uh, I see my luck if anyone is uh, willing to give it a guess. There's a unique shortest path uh, from start to end. Okay, um, so the shortest part is from star three, one, n. And um, sometimes 
a user has to wrap the link from right to left uh, in order to follow the path. So to aid comprehension of edge wrapping, we provide um, partial and full context representation uh, as it provides a replication of the network across the torus layer. So in a first controlled study involving 24 participants, uh, we found that full context is the best torus layer and is as good as standard unwrapped visualization for edge and path following tasks. Majority of participants favored full context as it provides a great overview of the entire network and it helps understand edge wrapping. However, some participants favor to choose to favor a non context as it is cleaner and the actual repetition looks redundancy for them. To that end, we conducted a second study with interactivity. Now, all the torus conditions are given the ability to pan. So when I use the pan, it, the trajectory will be uh, follow a torus topology with top to button and left to right wrapping. So uh, we recruit a new set of participants and we found that with interactivity, the no, no context layer is as good as um, un unwrapped standard visualization and full context layer. However, partial context is still the worst layer. For more details, please refer to um, this kind of paper. One limitation of the aforementioned torus layer algorithm is it, is, it easily converge to a local minimum um, during the stress minimization process um, as it considers all pairs of nodes across all possible torus wrappings. Um, therefore, it requires a, a good initial state to guide the algorithm to find a better solution that is closer to the global in optimum. However, this manual intervention is not scalable to larger and denser network. It, therefore, it is hard to, realist, to study realistically large networks. We propose a second algorithm that does not require a good initial layout. And also it is completely autonomous. It's called pairwise torus. Uh, we adapt existing uh, standard unwraps layout algorithm, stochastic gradient descent um, by Zen and others to consider more complicated cases in torus topology. So as we can see, um, it could automatically finds a torus layout that um, reveals the high level network structure such as clusters. Furthermore, um, in order to better review the clusters and help the user to be more concentrated on the network structure, we propose a second algorithm to find the best viewport that minimize wrapping links. With this algorithm, we are able to study realistically larger network. We tried a few real world toss layout examples. For example, this foot, football network um, represents um, team competitions in one of the year in USA. And this recipe network, and this football network shows uh, toss layout has better distribution of the hub across the surface. For a recipe network, it represents um, food ingredients that are commonly used together in a recipe. We can see that it, the torus layer makes it easier to see there are three main clusters from this network diagram. Oops. Oh, so I forgot to put a preprint link here, but I'll paste this link in the chat. So feel free to have a look. Um, it has a full set of uh, study materials we used and the, the algorithm evaluation for this for this Kai paper. Um, we perform a comprehensive analysis uh, across 200, 200 random networks. Um, and we found the result is quite compelling that the torus layout significantly improved the graph aesthetic metrics um, 
so the detail can be found in, the, in this paper. In a third control study involving 32 participants, we compare um, high-level natural structures, cluster amplification across torus and non torus layout. And we found uh, torus layout significantly improve um, error and time compared with traditional layout. This result was not um, was not uh, found before when we uh, used the previous algorithm. Similarly, for this task, um, identifying the no cluster task, the torus layout significantly outperform the unwrapped visualization in terms of error and time. Um, one of our future direction is to develop a torus diagram authoring tool. Um, we are interested to study is torus layout uh, able to be practically usable by domain experts such as the software developers, software architects for their daily tasks. This example shows um, Donut project um, from uh, by Dwyer and others. Um, so similar to this tool, uh, we plan to um, implement some functions such as node placement constraints so that a user could uh, fix some high centrality nodes while having the having some options such as beautification, rubber band routing to automatically compute the layout that is. Uh, aesthetically pleasing, and we um, our current our previous algorithm um, mainly minimizes stress. We are also interested in um, combination of other objective functions such as minimize link crossings, deviation of instance angle or combination of them to find um, a better quality layout. For example, we could. Um, a potential study is to involve a domain expert to uh, allow them to use the tool to create their, their best preferred layout and then use their tool to to help us to help us develop a automatic course algorithm that could produce such layouts. Um, another future direction is to um, explore other topology apart from course we are also looking at sphere. So this um, we could implement a 3D sphere um, topology using CollaJS, and then we could obtain the um, 2D um, spherical wrapping of this layout. So they are rectangular and non-rectangular projection of these networks, and it is it has not been done yet that which representation would. Um, will be more beneficial to perception of um, for domain users. We have seen relational data such as networks that is repable. Uh, we are currently looking at another type of data, cyclic data such as time series, which is also potentially repable. Time series, um, for example, there's, um, for example, this, um, line chart shows the number of influence, number of people in, um, that um, have influenced our conditions over um, an aggregated year across weeks of the year. And this shows the average rainfall of Australia over months of a year. Uh, another diagram shows the uh, number of tweets and retreat in a social platform represented in a heat map. And this one is a horizontal graph of traffic patterns. So all these are time series data. Time series data has um, one special, for example, this time series data has one special dimension, the months of, a, months of a year. We could therefore represent this chart on a cylinder and then allow, it, allow user to can horizontally to explore the data, to focus on different sections of the data. For, and similarly, uh, radio charts could also be, um, could also be, um, could allow, also allow users to pan 
uh, in one spatial dimension, which is months over here. And we are interested in exploring um, whether the, the charge with a cylindrical wrapping, cylindrical panning and wrapping would be, would provide more benefit to uh, unwrapped visualization. For time series data with two spatial dimension, we can lay it out on a donut topology and allow a user to pan horizontally or vertically to explore the time series data. Is it understandable? So that's the question we are currently exploring. Um, in order to study user patterns, user behaviors of um, using wrapped visualization, we also collected users' qualitative data, such as eye movement using an uh, eye tracking during the study. This example shows uh, a full context torus layout. And uh, I use a visual eye tracking tool and an analytics tool created by Sarah Gouin from our group to perform the analysis. From the, the left diagram shows uh, the participant's eye movement over a uh, shortest past task. And we can see that um, there's more um, eye movement in the, along the boundary of the representation. From this tool, um, I could identify there yeah, are at least two user patterns. For example, um, we define the area of interest in the center and a donut's area of interest in the outer area, in the boundary, and then a third LI, which is another donut shape LI that covers the outer area. And we found that uh, one, uh, one group of participants exclusively use um, the boundary area of interest when they are answering the task, while a half, or half of them are participants when participants belong to the second group where they use more than one area of interest in their, in their task. Finally, is it useful for real world applications? Um, in the beginning, we saw these software architecture diagrams. So will Torus layout be practically usable for software applications? Will the Torus authoring tool be um, of interest from software users. We are also interested in any data set uh, from software engineering that is potentially wrappable uh, in continuous surface, such as cylinder sphere or torus. Uh, we are open for such data set and um, happy to discuss further if you have any um, interesting thoughts or any other concerns. In the second part of this talk, I'll be sharing past experience working with um, agile software teams. Before joining Monash from 2015 to 2015, I was um, working as a software engineer in a, in a, lovely, in a lovely lab called Fair System in e-payment device lab. Um, um, many interesting people, um, monthly birthday parties and many scrum meetings, which we call daily stand-up meetings. This, this, uh, this picture shows our agile software team. You can see um, development teams, um, scrum master, um, software architects, and QA developers and managers as well. And the, there are several departments of fair collection, fair system in this battle campus. So part of my part of my life is going to the campus, like what I'm doing now. Um, so during the when I joined the when I joined the lab, um, they just studied a bus contracting model, which is a um, new model for the for Singapore government to out to uh, slowly move the the government owned um, bus operation to private sectors. So. This model involves a lot of software requirement changes, new functionalities, and many, many discussions with the customers. 
they open uh, bus operation to private sectors such as Go Ahead Singapore and Tower Transit Singapore, which are two bus operators from London and UK. Um, so this lab is basically in charge of most automated fare collection software applications in use in uh, bus and MRT systems in Singapore. For example, um, they have such new onboard bus equipment to um, to read the field, to read the information from the SIM card and then to uh, also transmit such data to the backend server through their onboard bus equipment. And at the backend, they are master deep computer system and deep automated field collection collection gateway to monitor the bus real time um, fare collection status and some severity status as well. From 2017-2019, I moved to uh, another branch in Land Transport Authority called MSI. MSI Global is in charge of overseas um, automated fare collection project. I was involved in uh, one of the major Bangkok Green Line extension projects, which is again a new um, a new project that upgrades the existing um, Bangkok transit systems, existing magnetic car to SIM card, and also support e-wallets. They call Rapid, rapid Line Pay. Um, again, this involves many functional requirement changes, um, apart from their decade-old existing magnetic systems and many, many discussions with the customers and, and software developers. So in the, um, in the team, I was, um, I was working with another three software developers in, uh, in charge of station computer and monitor control workstation. Um, this is one of the project we did. Um, they usually have the station layout, which is provided from the uh, operator and we develop station layout such that it could uh, provide an overview to the uh, operator in the control room where they could um, immediately see um, the status and severity faults of, for example, the automatic gate, the um, placement, so the point of touch, um, point of touch service machine and ticket vending machine and so on. And this is the MRT map which also um, provide the overview of the entire line to see whether there is severity fault so that um, the operator could send um, maintenance staff and they could also use the interface to uh, temporarily set some device to be out of service to avoid any potential accidents for the public, for the patrons. Um, another other collaborative FC project in MSI um, they recently launched uh, AFC in Bangalore uh, in January 2021. Congratulations to them. Um, I was involved only in initial um, software design discussion with them, but it's interesting to say they finally successfully launched the project and other projects in Manila, Qatar, and Taiwan. Uh, Deborah is uh, um, a very good deputy manager. I still keep have contact with my ex, ex manager and Deborah. Um, they are happy to um, help to in, evaluate any software, um, if software prototype that could improve software engineering process, which I'll talk about in the, in the next session. Um, last time I um, helped to connect uh, John and his uh, PhD student, Kashumi, to my former teams to help disseminate some human centric software development uh, surveys. And some of my colleagues, yeah, they, they took the survey and hopefully it's helpful. So one of the future goals for the uh, development team and then the whole automated fair collection team is low coding, program be more intuitive and less of semantics. Um, because for such a, a medium and large scale projects, it involves a lot of complex product development and it also has high learning curve of software development. 
For example, there are many software modules component in using um, each device, um, such as the station computer, um, the card reader, the automatic gates, ticket vending machine, and so on. Many languages such as C Sharp, C++, .NET, JavaScript, and so on, and many documents, including functional document, design document requirements to follow up, and also a lot of styles of coding from developers. Some human-centric issues um, we have before, such as operators are senior, less digital savvy, and they are busy, they are familiar with the old existing system. So during the two major projects I was involved, where it retarded existing systems, there were uh, lots of um, the several rounds of discussion, and um, sometimes we have to we have to um, change our to modify our existing functionality or even delete existing functions in order to incorporate new functions. Developer-centric, um, whether the tool provided is uh, help help to improve engagement and also improve the throughput is also a question. Requirement changes and high defect rate, such as mostly non-critical facts. Uh, one common approach we use in a lot in some teams is Scrum framework. Um, we in introduce the Spring framework, sorry, Scrum framework. We basically run the Spring every three weeks. We have every standard meeting, um, which in the beginning we will create user story, break down the story into tasks. For example, this is one of the story which we, um, which managers, developers, QA engineers, um, and we also in, involve um, operators for some discussion when we create a story. Um, and after we have created the stories, developers, testers will beat the tasks. Sometimes the Scrum Master assign the task to developers. It is interesting that we found when developers are willing to beat the task, it also, when they volunteer to beat the task, they also, um, we also could um, evaluate their um, performance of taking the task. And then if they have a very good success rate, they are likely to successfully beat uh, more tasks for certain kind in future. And we use this, um, we usually use the a poker card and we sit uh, around a table. So each um, developer can give a poker card to say how many hours they estimate to complete a task. And then um, the final one with the, the best and most suitable working hours will be selected and will be entered into the story. Um, we also create a product backlog and um, we have a demo at the end of the sprint to our boss. And then we usually allocate twice the estimated working hours to, um, to not to overcommit to our customers because um, they were charged based on functionality. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I had mentioned this. Um, yeah, so we also face some requirement changes um, among the from the customers. Our customers. So sometimes we the scrum master calls for requirement change meeting, whether we accept or reject the requirement the functional changes. Um, usually, um, we will follow uh, our SOP to update the user story to include new features or modification of existing features. We usually involve, uh, we'll call for a Scrum, a Spring meeting to in, involve uh, developers and software designers to uh, estimate the impact of the changes um, because we don't want to impact the existing uh, working system in the production and 
we also want to balance the new requirement. Another uh, tool we introduce in our team is software visualization. Um, for example, we use Visual Studio Command, which is a, a Visual Studio Enterprise tool to help us to create on the fly the software diagrams. This helps us to um, communicate with other developers to especially for newcomers, which um, usually don't have an idea where the defects arise. And then it's common that they inherit a new device that has already had hundreds of bugs in the system. So one developer um, provided a feedback that they like um, the software visualization because that's the tool they want as they have, um, it helps them to find uh, potential bugs in the system. Um, so, and when I talk, uh, when I talk to them, um, I'm researching some visualization. Uh, they both told me they are happy to um, evaluate any future software visualizations from uh, their lab as well, which is good news. Um, we also use Jira Trello to um, to support the Scrum framework. Um, there are multiple pens which we use in Jira. It's quite common. We have to do and um, progress development test, SIT, UAT, and finally complete. So um, our experience is for Trello, it, is, um, it provides a very easy user interface with um, a lovely um, and easy to use drag and drop to move the task around and then to see some um, high level trend like how many tasks remaining for a specific uh, tag. And we use Jira to estimate the working hour. It is more complicated and more comprehensive to allow people to type in the number of hours required for each task and also to provide provide high level visualization of defect rates, workload uh, for each person. Um, so some feedback is, yeah, as I have mentioned, Trello is easy to, to use, less learning curve, and some people are preferred, and Trello is preferred by some people over Jira. Um, and we also include operators in using Jira Trello in as part of our Scrum process because um, they could see how uh, how their uh, functionalities move on and what is the requirement that has the most defect rate. And although they never they normally don't use it until uh, before the meeting with management teams. Other approaches to reduce high defect rate, uh, we also use static code analysis such as Parasoft to analyze potential issues such as mem uh, memory leak or um, or some non-pointer references or potential crash of the system. And we have code review with software designers for critical defects. Um, development environment testing, which is uh, uh, which is very useful. We run, we have, we simulate a uh, uh, real system in our lab with um, gates and with end-to-end -end devices to simulate the transmission of files between devices so that we uh, could simulate transaction load tests. And um, I remember uh, we want in one in one of the transaction load tests, um, each each of our developer uh, 30 of them, we line up a queue and then we enter the gates um, quickly as fast as we could to simulate um, some high, um, some peak load during the transaction to see whether we will crash the automatic gates. And luckily it does that. Um, well, let's the next whole talk and I hope this input will be helpful and yeah, happy to chat 
um, any any uh, interesting data, any uh, use cases that the um, yeah, web data visualization will be useful for software engineering applications. <laughs> 